Hey, Hubs. Hey, Hubs. Hey. Where's Lois? She couldn't make it. You know, I can't believe you're really going out with a woman named Lois. I know, finally. <laughs> but George, guess who her boss is? Duncan Meyer. Duncan Meyer? Who's he? Elaine, only one other person in the world knows what I'm about to tell you, and that's George. When we were in the ninth grade, they had us all line up at one end of the schoolyard for this big race to see who was going to represent the school in this track meet. Mm -hmm. I was the last one on the end. George was next to me, and Mr. Bevelock with the What's that? Mr. Bevelock with the gym teacher. Oh, of course. He was down at the <laughs> other end. So he yells out, ready, on your mark, get set. And I was so keyed up, I just took off. <laughs> By the time he said go, I was 10 yards ahead of everybody. No. I, mean, I looked up, I couldn't believe it. When the time the race was over and I had won, I was shocked. <laughs> Nobody had noticed the head start. Really? Yes, and I had won by so much, a myth began to grow about my speed. <laughs> Only Duncan suspected something was amiss. He's hated me ever since. And now he's back. Well, what happened when you raced him again? I never did. In four years of high school, I would never race anyone again. Not even to the end of the block or to catch a bus. And so the legend grew. Everyone wanted me to race. They begged me. The track coach called my parents, pleading, telling them that it was a sin for me to waste my God-given talent. But I answered him in the same way I answered everyone. I choose not to run. <laughs> so now Duncan is back. He's back. As I knew he would be someday. <laughs> Man, that's some tart cider. <laughs>